Brakataya Hawa, Brakataya Hawa Shai, Brakataya Hawa, Brakataya Hawa Shai, Brakataya Hawa, Brakataya Hawa Shai. Blessed be the true, holy, powerful, and mighty name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And blessed be the true, holy, powerful, and mighty name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, our Lord and our Savior. Nathan Mashana Kabai Lazar Kwamin Shoyah Sharala. Give double honors to the elders of Israel, which is the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. And Shalawam Wahab Labakiyar Shoyah Sharala, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Come back at y'all again with another lesson. Bahara Chakwada Shah Amaf and the Holy Spirit of Truth. And uh, this, this is just going to be a response video to, to this video and, and everything that's going on. All right. Um, uh, basically, you know, you have uh, men and women that follow this camp. You know, they, they follow camps, man. We, we follow the truth. OK, but they follow camps. So when the truth comes out, no matter no, no matter what the truth is, they going to follow the camp that they follow. All right. And, and because of that and because uh, and because we bring out the truth, they're going to say that we're hating. Because we're reproving and rebuking the camp that they follow that's teaching incorrectly. That's what Israel, Israel calls that hating. They don't know what the hell is going on. Meanwhile, they don't know what the hell is going on. All up on the comment board, telling brothers how to teach, all right? Telling brothers what they should have did. Meanwhile, you click on their page and it says no content. Zero videos, zero, zero subscribers, zero content, man. You're not on the highways and byways. You're not putting up any lessons. You're not doing nothing for this ministry. So you should just shut the hell up. All right. Let the prophets teach. Let the prophets speak. Okay. Let the men of the Lord, the men of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai speak. Okay. If you sit on your couch every week, if you're not in the midst of the battle, shut the hell up. Okay. So now getting into the lesson. Learning what hate is according to the Bible. As you see the title of this video, Stop the Hatred Against Thy Brother. Really, we're showing you love. Israel don't know the difference between love and hate. That's how America has fucked us up. All right. Being, being in it, growing up in America, got our people emotional and fucked up in the brain. All right. Fucked up in the head. Don't know the difference between love and hate. Okay. You reproving someone, rebuking someone, correcting someone on somewhere that they went off is not hatred. It's not hating on someone. That's actually showing love. Let me get a precept to back that up. This is Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 5. Open rebuke. Oh, well, you should have went up to him in private and took him into the room and told him that he was teaching incorrectly. Now nah, you taught the doctrine openly incorrectly. So we going to openly correct you. All right. That's how that goes. Going back into it, Proverbs 27 and 5, open rebuke is better than secret love. So rebuking you openly for a fault that you did or, 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 or for teaching the scriptures openly and correctly, openly rebuking you, that's better than secret love. So that's love in itself. But to Israel, because Jake is emotional, they look at it as, as hate, hate, hatred, man. People all on the comment board, why y'all hating? That's not hating. Damn, black culture got our people fucked up, man. Correcting someone for a fault is not hatred. If I'm telling you, if I'm telling you smoking cigarettes, right? Clearly cigarettes is going to kill you. On the carton it says, it says that this can give you cancer, right? So I tell you to stop smoking cigarettes. Is that hating? It's, I tell you, uh, you know, you know, them cigarettes is going to get you killed. Right? You know, them, them cigarettes is not good for you. You know, them cigarettes is, is, is not right to uh, uh, do. You know, smoking cigarettes is not right to do. Is that hatred? Or is that love? All right. So let's read that again. This is Proverbs 27 and 5. It says, open rebuke is better than secret love. Plain, simple, straight to the point. Okay, let's get another precept. This is um, Sirach chapter... 30 Sirach chapter 32 and verse 17 a sinful man will not be reproved but findeth an excuse uh, excuse according to his will a sinful man will not be reproved we're trying to reprove you we're trying to correct you because you're teaching you're teaching the scriptures incorrectly you're teaching parts of the scriptures incorrectly prime example revelations 13 and 16 where it says he causeth all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead that mark is, is talking about the market is talking about the R RFID chip, the microchip, all right? And there's countless of videos, all right, going into going in depth into that, proving that it's the microchip, all right? In depth videos showing you that that mark is a carnal mark and not a spiritual mark, okay? We're reproving you. That is the heritage of the saints. That is the heritage of the servants of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Let me get that precept. 
This is Isaiah chapter, what is it, 34? Isaiah, uh, Salaki, maybe 54. Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. So if you're rising up against this truth, man, all right, we got we to gotta rebuke you, okay? It says, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord Yahweh, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord Yahweh. This is our heritage to correct you when you're going on, when, when you're going off, when you're doing wrong. But as it says in Jeremiah 17 and 4, our people has been discontinued from their heritage. All right. They've been discontinued from their heritage. So they're not used to this. They're not used to being corrected when they're in, in error. They're not used to being corrected when they're in wrong. And when they are corrected, when they're in wrong, they take it emotionally. They try to find an excuse. All right. To justify themselves. Oh, y'all hating. That's the excuse. Y'all hating. How about you take heed? Countless of videos going in going in depth on Revelations 13 and 16. And all you can say on the comment board is y'all hating. What about the breakdown? We just clearly showed you plain and simple that they're teaching that scripture incorrectly. And all you got to say is y'all hating. That's why the Lord is going to bring death and destruction to two thirds of our people, man. A lot of the motherfuckers on the comment board, they're going to die. Okay, that's plain and simple. The scriptures say that. Let me bring out the scriptures, okay? Let me bring out the scriptures. So that way, that way you can't get mad at me or what I'm saying. Get mad at y'all by Shem Yahweh Shai. Get mad at the Bible, okay? A lot of people is going to die. And a lot of the ones on the comment board, with their mouth, they show much love. All on the comment board, but ain't got no works. Ain't benefiting this ministry in no type of way. But you got something to say. This is the book of 2 Ezra chapter 9. 2nd Ezra chapter 9 and verse uh, 15. It says, I have said before and now do speak and will speak it also hereafter that there be many more of them which perish than of them which shall be saved. There's going to be many more of them which perish than them that's going to be saved. There's going to be a lot of death coming to this world. As it says in 2nd Ezra, the 8th chapter, 2nd Ezra chapter 8 and verse 50. For many great miseries shall be done to them in the latter, in the latter time shall, in the latter time shall dwell in the world. Because they have walked in great pride. Because of your great pride, you're going to perish. Because you're not taking reproof. Because you're not taking correction, you're going to perish. Let's jump back over to the ninth chapter. 2 Ezra chapter 9 and verse 22. Let the multitude, meaning what? Let the majority of the people, right? Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. Born in vain. Born for no reason. Born, born just to get your destruction, man. You ain't doing nothing for this ministry. Nothing for y'all by Shem Yahweh shot. But got the audacity to come on the comment board, all right, and, and, and speak against men that's out there laboring, all right? Men that's been laboring for 30 plus years, 25 plus years, 20 plus years, 10 plus years, man. Out there week after week, presenting their body as a living sacrifice while you're being while you're doing nothing for y'all by Shem Yahweh shot. You was born in vain, therefore you're gonna perish. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain, and let my great be kept and my plant. For with great labor have I made it perfect. And the Lord is great being kept in his plant. Be, and his plant is what? The elect. The elect of the nation of Israel. All right. So let's go. Let's go back into uh, Sirach 32 and 17. It says, a sinful man will not be reproved, but find it an excuse according to his will. A sinful man will not be reproved, will not take correction. All right. But will find the excuse. Oh, they just hate him. You're allowing your vain opinion, your evil suspicion to overthrow your judgment, man. As it says in the book of Sirach, the third chapter. All right. But find it an excuse according to his will. So that's it on that. I want to get another, uh, a couple more precepts before I play this video. Um, this is uh, Sirach chapter 15 and verse 10. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. Right. All we're doing is correcting you. That's what the Bible is for, man. None of us is perfect. OK. And you're going off. You're simply going off on the breakdown of uh, 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 Revelations 13 and 16. So we're correcting you. All right. We're correcting you with the precepts. Let me get another scripture. This is a. Uh, this is. Second Timothy 
chapter 3 and verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of Yahweh and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Right. So that's that's the path that we're walking. We're in we're on the path of, of, of being perfected. So on this path of being perfected, we're going to have to receive reproof. We're going to have to receive correction and instruction. OK, because we've been indoctrinated in this world. We didn't know who we were uh, uh, not too long ago. So now being returned back into our heritage, there's certain things that we have to learn. There's certain things that we have to be reproved on and certain things that we have, be, uh, have to be corrected on. All right. So you have to take that correction humbly in meekness. OK, so let's go back into that Proverbs and we're going to hop into the video. Proverbs chapter 15 and 10. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. And he that hateth reproof shall die. If you hate reproof, hate correction, you're going to die. We're trying to save you from death, but we hating. Trying to save you from destruction, but we hating. Let's go into the video. Think that it is a sin to hate your brother. So we're going to go to Leviticus 19 and 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So... Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to start at 16. Nope, nope. You, you, nope. You got to break that down. All right. You got to break that down. Let's read it. This is Revelations chapter 9. Or slack it. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So hating your brother would not be rebuking him when he's going off. Hating your brother would allowing him to sin. Would be allowing him to sin. Would be allowing him to teach this, the, to teach the Bible incorrectly. That's what hating is. So love would be the opposite of that. Showing love is what rebuking your neighbor and and uh, 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 not suffering him to sin. Okay, that's what love is according to the Bible. Love isn't some uh, 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 go along to get along. All right, type of thing. That's not what love is. All right, that shit leads to death. That's really hatred, okay? This world got our people all backwards and fucked up, man. Leviticus chapter 19 and 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. That, so, so it said that you should not hate your brother in your heart, right? So now it's about to explain to you what loving your brother is. OK, it says thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. That's all we're doing. We're rebuking you. We're correcting you. We're reprove, reproving you through the spirit and power. How about some Yahweh shy because you're teaching the scriptures incorrectly. A very important scripture, a very important prophecy. You're teaching it incorrectly. And by you teaching it incorrectly to your followers and to the people that subscribe to you, that's going to lead to not only your death, but their death also. All right. Really, we're showing love. But our people can't see it because they're too damn emotional. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor, I am the Lord. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in, other, in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin. Let's start up a little higher, all right? This is Leviticus chapter six, uh, seven, Leviticus chapter 19 and 15. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. But in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. All right? In righteousness shall I judge thy neighbor. How do you judge your neighbor in righteousness? By going according to the scriptures. If you're going into the scriptures, which is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. All right. If you're going into the scriptures, that's not hate. That's love. Now, if you're speaking outside of the scriptures, that's unrighteous judgment. That's hating. Get, getting on a brother that 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 uh, that doesn't go according to the scriptures, that's hatred right there. But we showing you precept upon precept where are you going off at. That's love according to the Bible, according to the scripture that you're reading right now. Okay, it says, "But in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor." Now I want to get another point that he says. Call him like Abba Shem Yahweh. So that's a commandment. We're not supposed to hate our brother. We're not supposed to have a jealousy, a jealous eye towards our brother. We're not supposed to detest our brother. 
you know, no matter what the difference is, no matter what the the doctrine is, if it be the mark of the beast, if you feel it. Pause. He said, no matter what the doctrine is, it don't matter what the doctrine is. You're not supposed to say nothing to your brother. Even if he's going off in doctrine, if he, even if he's teaching the scriptures incorrectly, you're not supposed to say nothing to him. That's incorrect, man. We can't walk with you on that. We can't get down with, with, with someone that thinks like that, man. Because the doctrine is important, okay? The doctrine is very important. There's a doctrine that's able to save your soul, okay? Let me get that precept. This is, um, it's all about the doctrine. It's all about the, the, the word doctrine just means teachings. It's all about the words of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. If you're going to butcher it, we're going to we, we gonna have to defend the gospel. If it's not about the doctrine, right, that shows that you're not a defender of the gospel. Let's get the precept. This is 1 Timothy. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 13. It says, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. So the doctrine is important. Is, is important. There's no S on that either. There's one doctrine, as it says in Ephesians. Let me get that precept. Precept upon precept, precept upon precept. Is Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 and 4. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope for your calling. So there is one body that Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai is dealing with. And that one body is going to be like-minded. That one body is going to be speaking uh, 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 the same thing as the scriptures say. Okay? Which body is that? Which camp is that? I'll wait. All right, there's Ephesians 4 and 4. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope for your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. There's one faith, one doctrine, there's one truth. So if you say it's not about the doctrine or you can put the doctrine, let me let me not, let me see what you say. Chip, we're not supposed to detest our brother. You know, no matter what the difference is, no matter what the... The doctrine is, if it be the mark of the beast, if... No, no matter what the doctrine is. I'm not setting aside the doctrine to please your emotions. Hebrew Israelite 101, one of the first scriptures that you memorize. Isaiah 58 and 1, cry aloud, spare not. We're not here for your emotions. We're here to teach the true doctrine of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions. We're showing you your damn transgressions. We're showing you where you're going off and you getting mad and saying that we're hating. But what did the scriptures say? If you hate reproof, you're going to die. That's the judgment. If not taking heed to the men of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai that he has set up. All right. It says one Lord, one faith. One baptism, one power, one, and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. Back to Timothy. This is 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 13. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. So the doctrine's important. You can't say no matter what the doctrine is. No, the doctrine is important. And we'll see why. Verse 14. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate. Right. Let me read that again. Neglect not the gift that is in thee. What's the gift? This knowledge and wisdom and understanding that you have. The faith that you have. Right. It says, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. What is the presbytery? The body of the elders. All right. Are y'all the body of the elders? Are y'all the presbytery? I'll wait. Verse 15. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. Give yourself wholly to these things. Give yourself wholly to these words. Holy to this doctrine, which is what we have done. We have given ourselves wholly to this doctrine. So I'm not going to set it aside to please your emotions. I'm not going to set it aside to make you feel good. Okay. It says, meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, 
For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. So taking heed unto yourself and unto the doctrine and continuing in that doctrine, continuing in that mind frame of giving attendance unto, unto reading, into doctrine, into exhortation, you'll be able to save yourself and them that hear thee. All right. Meaning, meaning when Yahweh Shai returns and you continued in his correct doctrine and you was preaching that correct doctrine, you'll be granted salvation. So the doctrine is important. The doctrine can never be set aside. All right. And we here at Great Millstone, starting with the apostles and the elders through the spirit and power, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. All right. We teach the doctrine of salvation. We teach the doctrine of everlasting life. So we're not going to put that away. Putting, putting, putting the doctrine to the side of everlasting life, that be showing love to, or that be showing hate to our brothers, man. All right. That would be showing hate to the nation, man. Allowing you to teach the scriptures incorrectly, that would be showing hate to the nation, man. Hate to Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and disobedience. And we are not going to do so just to please your carnal emotions. All right? You feel it's the chip, or we feel it's whatever philosophy Esau. We don't feel it's the chip. We don't feel it's the chip. It's not about feeling. It's not about emotion. We know it's the chip. The Bible says it's the, the Bible clearly plain, planes out and, 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 and uh, uh, says that it's the microchip, man. There's no other way around it, man. It says that he caused it all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. When you go into that word mark, it has nothing to do with spirituality because these guys are teaching that the mark is a spiritual mark and not a physical mark. Well, when you go into the word mark, it means what? It means what? to A, a, a sculpture or engraving. When you go into the word sculpture, it means to cut. When you go into the word engraving, it means cutting. All right. So it's something physical. Furthermore, when you read verse 17, it says, without that mark, you won't be able to buy yourself. So if it's spiritual, if it's the philosophies, if it's wicked philosophies, how are you going to be able to buy and sell with wicked philosophies? How the fuck does that make sense, man? All right. How the hell does that make any damn sense? If you put your emotions to the side, you see that you're going off and that what we're telling you is the truth. And you'll be able to you, you'll be able to deliver yourself from the, uh, uh, the, the destructive path that you're uh, upon, man. Okay. Pride goeth before of destruction. Pride goeth before destruction. A haughty spirit before a fall. Push. If you feel the Sabbath is by the moon, or we go by the Sabbath uh, Friday. We don't feel the Sabbath is by the moon. All right. No feeling. All right. It's all about what the scriptures say. Sundown the Saturday. Sundown. It's just true. Okay. The Bible says that the Sabbath goes by the moon. Plain and simple. How is how is how is the Sabbath? From Friday to Saturday sundown, where when when was the Gregorian? Y'all are scholars, right? Y'all are the top men of Israel. Y'all are the watchmen of Israel, right? You're on this whole high ass level, right? What what calendar are we under? Are we not under the Gregorian calendar? When was the Gregorian calendar created? Was that the calendar that we was using in the ancient days? The Gregorian calendar was made in in, in like the fifteen hundred, like fifteen eighty two, if I'm if if I'm correct, all right. So what was we going by 1,500 years before that, thousands of years before that? What was we going by in the times of Genesis? It says that the Lord made signs in the heavens for seasons and for days. He said he made the sun and the moon for seasons, for days, and for years. That Those are our calendars, all right? The moon and the sun. We're dealing with facts, not with feeling. I can't hate you. I'm not supposed to hate you. That's a sinful act. That's ridiculous to hate somebody because we we don't see eye to eye when it comes to the scriptures. We don't see eye to eye according to the scriptures. Let me get a precept. This is um We hating. Well what does the scripture say? You're teaching contrary to the correct doctrine. What does the scripture say? This is Revel uh, Romans chapter 16 and 17. Now I will beseech you, brethren, mark them. And this word mark, there's many definitions for mark. This word mark isn't the same word for mark in Revelations. Just how it's not the same word for mark in the book of Ezekiel 9 and 4. All right. This word mark goes back to the Greek word skopeo. All right. Put a scope on them. Okay. Let everybody know that they're teaching incorrectly. Let's read it. This is Romans 16 and 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine. We can't put the doctrine to, to, to the side, man. We got to mark you. According to the Bible, we got to mark you for teaching contrary to the doctrine. All right. 
It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. So if we're not seeing eye to eye, what does the scripture say in Amos? How, do, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? If we ain't seeing eye to eye and you're not teaching according to the doctrine, the true doctrine that we have learned through the apostles and the elders, through the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, then we got to mark you. We got to put you on blast. You teaching a, 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 a incorrect doctrine openly, so we're going to rebuke you and correct you openly. Open rebuke is better than secret love. All right, verse 18, it says, For they that are such serve not our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, but their own belly. And by good words, oh, that brother, he teaching good. He cutting up them Edomites good. Anybody can cut up a damn Edomite, man. That's simple. That's light work. They're the devil that the Bible speaks of, man. There's brothers on the other side of the line that, that easy, easily cut up an Edomite, man. That's nothing. It says, but there, it says, and by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. Yeah, and that's majority of the people on y'all comment board. Simple-minded Israelites. Simple-minded simple Negroes, all right? And Latinos and Native Americans. Simple-minded, man. All right? A true Israelite, the true heritage of an Israelite is to correct your brother, correct your nation if they're doing incorrectly, if they're teaching incorrectly, if they're going off a tr true heritage of an Israelite is to correct them, man. So if you're not doing so, you're just a nigga. Okay? Let me read that last verse again. It says, For they that are such serve not our Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. Having that said, Lord willing, that was edifying. Want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakal Kwadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father. And Yahweh Shai is the true name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and our Savior. Rakal Kwadash is the Holy Spirit that speaks through us, allowing us to rightly divide the word of truth and teach the word correctly and directly. Give double honors to the elders of Israel, which is the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. And Shalom Wahab Labaki Yasharala, which is Peace and love to the elect of Israel. Shalom, Akim, you brothers keep on pushing. You brothers continue to go hard. You brothers continue to uh, uh, de um, defend the gospel. All right? And, and continue to push, man. We almost about this bitch. All right? Shalom.